guys. This is Creatures of the Night podcast, and I am Wendy. I'm Chris. Hello, everyone. And to kick off the new year, 2021, in this week's podcast, we are doing something a little different. Instead of an in-depth paranormal story where we investigate some location or legendary tale, we are just going to have an open discussion on a given topic. These episodes are meant to be a little lighter, more about our opinions, I guess, on random paranormal related subjects. Or maybe not paranormal related, <laughs> whatever we want to talk about. Oh, and you said, or maybe not, it was like, or maybe we won't give our opinions. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we don't really know what we're doing here. We're making it up as we go along, as we have done this entire podcast. So, but now you just hear us breathing, and that's the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy. <laughs> I bet nobody else is doing that. That would make us special. <laughs> right? Exactly. That's what we need a new niche. <laughs> That's it. Just so you guys know, Chris and I have agreed upon these topics. They're not like where we surprise each other with a story, you know. These are topics that we've come up with and we shared that with each other before recording. So we had a few notes put together. So just depending on how this episode goes, we are thinking of doing this more and more and kind of sprinkling them around our full length shows. So for this week's discussion topic, we thought nothing could be more fitting than starting at the beginning and yeah. explaining what got us into the paranormal. In a sense, this is our origin story. Were we bitten by a radioactive ghost or do we just kind of have a weird, you know, interest? So Chris, do you want to start off or do you want me to go first? <laughs> I can totally start off, but I'm on a completely different subject. I am doing a personal ghost story, which is what I thought, not what got us into the paranormal. Um, so this might be a problem. <laughs> Already flunking these kinds of episodes <laughs> where we thought we had it worked out ahead of time. You know what's <laughs> funny is on the calendar that I made while we had this whole conversation, it totally says personal ghost story. Yeah. <laughs> But two days ago, when I was putting this together, I thought origin story for some reason. And that's where I went. But it's okay, because my origin story is a ghost story. So ghost story slash how we got into this. And that's totally fine, because I can tell you how I got into the paranormal. I mean, I just always had a interest for things otherworldly. But it was really a story that my mom or a couple of stories that my mom had that really just piqued my interest in the paranormal. You know, she unfortunately was, I think, 16 years old when her father passed away. And oh. she is one of five. She said that the day of his funeral, she was in the kitchen and she was just standing there looking out the window and she felt his presence and she felt kind of like a hand on her shoulder. And to her, it was soothing. And she took it as being her father. And, you know, she told me that story and I'm just like, what do you mean? <laughs> what? I don't understand. And she's like his spirit. His spirit was there, Christy, you know, and I knew that he was OK and he was at rest. And she talked about him many, many times. As a matter of fact, all of my family members have had stories that kind of coincide with that, the passing of her father. So he's made his presence known to a couple of my family members, just not me, which is funny because like I never had a paranormal experience. I had the stories that my mom shared with me and I was really intrigued. Like, wow, I want to experience that. It seems like such a neat eye opening how do you get that? How does that, you know, you can, you can go to the library and pick out a book and you can be involved in the story so much that you feel like you lived it, but I want to live it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there was a time when I was a kid and I would have reoccurring dreams, which scared me. And they bothered me so much that I started to think that maybe, you know, I was living another life. Like maybe I had lived a life before, you know, and that, and then hearing the stories that my mom would tell me, you know, it just sort of kind of created this interest for me. It opened your eyes yeah. to this kind of the other side, the other worlds, yeah. you know, and these possibilities. Sure. Yeah. So there was never until Wendy and I started paranormal investigations, I had not had an actual experience myself. And since Wendy and I have been paranormal investigating. I've had so Tons. many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got what you were asking for. I really did. I went out looking for it and it let me know that it was there. I mean, so much so that I've questioned my religious beliefs. I've questioned why we're not able to know more. Are we only allowed to know, you know, just this bit? Maybe we aren't 
supposed to know more about these people. When we go chasing spirits or these other entities, you know, does it sort of like open you up like a red flag to them? Are they able then to say, hey, she's been looking for us? You know, does it turn you into like a scratch and sniff, you know, to the paranormal (laughs) world? Like, it seemed like it for me. When Wendy and I started digging in and we went deeper and deeper and and we'd get equipment and then we'd sit in these dark rooms and things would just manifest. Yeah. And in a big way that it, A, immediately further my beliefs. It was like, yes, I was right. They do exist. They are here. And then when you go to a place after place after place and nothing happens, it's like, there's no such thing as ghosts. (laughs) <laughs> what is this shit? You know, you just have to go back to the experiences that you have had. Yeah. And, you know, so actually along the lines, and I'll make it quick. The one that I had planned to tell you today was an interesting experience that I had. Now, like I said before, of all the experiences that I've had, they've only occurred with Wendy, with my Wendy by my side. Mm-hmm. I have an experience. She's experienced that at the same time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's seen what I've seen or she's felt what I've felt. She might have felt something completely different and we have an experience together, but usually she doesn't like see the same thing or smell the same thing. She gets her own experience. Yeah. So the one that I wanted to mention was one that I've never discussed, I don't think, on this podcast before. And it happened at the James Eldred House in Eldred, Illinois. And Wendy had an experience there. We Mm -hmm. had a couple experiences. But one that continues to really blow my mind was when we were outside of the James Eldred House. And this is this old, old house in the middle of the farm somewhere in Illinois. (laughs) Like, I don't know. It is in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yes. Yeah, it's nowhere. But this house is so cool and it's ancient. It's got history. And this was an open, what do you call it? Open paranormal investigation. Yeah, public event. Yeah, thank you. It was a public event. So we were there with like several other people. But this was back in the day when Wendy and I were like, we're going all night. (laughs) We are here until the first signs of light. So we were in the middle of an exchange in the building and they were basically swapping up the teams, right? So Wendy and I kind of walked along the side of the house, along the tree line. And as we're passing the tree line, Wendy's doing something with her camera. And I don't know if she's changing out the battery or if she's trying to look to see if it recorded. I really don't know what she's doing, but she's consumed. And I happen to look up at the window in the James Eldred house and I see a ball of light appear. It just appeared and it floats across the window. And I'm trying to get Wendy's attention because I'm standing there in the woods witnessing this ball of light just appear and float in front of this window. And I'm even touching Wendy and she is not responding like one bit. And I'm like, can you hear me? What is going on? What's wrong? (laughs) And Wendy turns and looks at me and she says, I don't know what's going on. I heard you. And that like really creeped me out. Like, are we in like a time warp? Like, were you frozen? You know, did the hidden people come and take you from me for a second? (laughs) You couldn't move. And I'm trying to get you to watch this. And I go back and it's completely, it's gone. It stopped. It's, it's disappeared. It's not there anymore. So I've got nothing to show Wendy, but You know, while I was entranced in this, because I didn't want to take my eyes off of it, you know, I'm noticing it doesn't cast any kind of light ray like a flashlight would if someone was shining a light up there. You know, it would have, I don't know, kind of like an effect where the light is hitting the window and shimmering kind of, right? Even if someone was against the window with a light, they wouldn't have been able to, you know, glide like it just went just like that. Yeah. And it was gone. And that was in the attic and you weren't supposed to be in the attic. Like we went in the attic afterwards. (laughs) Yeah, we did. Yeah. But nobody was supposed to go up there and nobody was supposed to be in the house at that time because we were all supposed to be outside, like doing a regroup type thing. And then you were going back into the house. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was either right before or right after we all had that huddle right in front where we were supposed to be talking about our experiences. And this was back with the uh, Bump in the Night group. Yeah. And they did a really good job. Lauren Taylor, I think was his name. Is no, that right? so Troy Taylor, Troy Taylor owns the company Bump in the Night. But Lauren, I think his name is Lauren. He was the like the tour guide that we yeah. went on a few of their tours and we always seemed to get him. Yes. I love him. I mean, he was just so laid back. He was just sort of like, all right, if you got any questions, I'll be here on this chair. Just sitting (laughs) here. Just sitting here (laughs) waiting on you. But he did have a lot of great experience that he's had. And he was real knowledgeable of the places that we went to most of the time. So he was a cool guy. But yeah, yeah, I remember being entranced with something like I thought I heard something in the woods. 
Yes, that's the thing. To me, you were a million miles away because I could not get you to stop fixating on whatever you were doing to turn. Like you were just like, what? Like, I heard you. Like, And when you turned around too, it was like bizarre. Yeah. It's like, fuck, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, it was. It's like I could hear you talking to me, but it was really muffled. Like I couldn't make out what you were saying because I just wasn't focused on whatever was happening with you. I was trying to focus on something else. But that's really all I can remember of the moment. That was a great location. I love that location. We've talked about it before on the podcast way in the beginning, I think. I don't remember the title. Something about cheese snacks, though. (laughs) (laughs) But you can also, if you go back on to like iTunes, then you can see it'll say James Eldridge House. So if you want to hear the full story about that place, check out that episode because it's an epic place. It's like one of my favorites. But that was also probably only like the second or third big investigation that we had done. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure maybe... Maybe Waverly Hills was before that and definitely the Wasika Wonder House, but we didn't see any actual apparitions at the Wasika House and I don't remember seeing them at Waverly either. Maybe like shadows out of the corner of your eyes type thing. But yes. not a full on like, what the fuck is that? So that might have been the first time you've ever seen a ghost then. Uh, yeah, good or point. Or something that could it be a something. ghost. Just that place had an intense energy to it. You know, Wendy had a great experience. It wasn't great, actually. <laughs> she had an experience. And that's when I found out that Wendy would use me as a human shield. <laughs> if necessary. <laughs> But things happened over and over and over again that couldn't be explained. And then I got a photograph that just blew my mind, man. It looked like there was this whited out face of a figure that was holding his hand in front of a woman who was taking a picture almost to say, you can't get this picture. So I always go back to that picture and say, did he have his hands over Wendy's ears at the time I was trying to get her attention? Yeah. I mean, it's a great location. And yes, that was, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Probably my first parent and probably why it was such a epic moment for me that I saw all of this happening and I could not get anyone else to witness it. My compadre, Wendy, was like right there. And she's just like in a trance. It was such a crazy, crazy moment. It is so crazy because, again, it's this place in the middle of nowhere. It mostly just has a story of a family that lived there. They loved yeah. that house. They lived there for a long time and nobody else really lived there. And they had tragedy in their family. You know, kids died at young ages because of the diseases that came through there. And that's really it. So a very simple, basic story. Not much for everybody to just come in droves and want to investigate this place. But here's a little local paranormal event. And we drive, you know, what, like 10 hours to be 10 there? Hours. It was local. worth it. It was totally <laughs> worth it because yeah. we got probably the only good full spectrum picture I've ever gotten in my life. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's a good one. (laughs) Then the the guy in the yard right where we were pretty much standing, you're right. That picture is amazing. So two of like the best photos we've ever gotten. We got all these EVPs of like girls singing and then responding also because I'll never forget the EVP that says, shh, they can hear you. Yes, yes. Because I think it's like there's some singing and one of us say, do you hear some singing? And then that's the response afterwards. Right. So, and then the, you know, real intense moment that I had down in the basement. And then you yep. realize that that's how our friendship goes. I will <laughs> sacrifice you to protect myself. Get out of my way. <laughs> that was such an epic moment, though. I, I wasn't going to tell it. It's your story to tell. But I know that we're doing this in sessions. So if you want to, then by all means. But we can save that for later because I know you have your own personal story that you've prepared for this show so yeah so like Chris said maybe we misinterpret what the topic of discussion was supposed to be but (laughs) I kind of tried to spin it back that was her first time ever seeing a ghost I'm gonna kind (laughs) of tell you about the first time I ever really saw a ghost So when I was a kid, I was a scaredy cat. Like I was afraid of the dark. I would climb into my parents' bed almost nightly. Yet I was also the type that would like watch from the hallway between a crack, you know, like the door makes a scary movie that my parents or someone's like watching on TV. So I'm like, I'm interested, but also terrified. And that would leave me like laying awake in bed at night, listening to like every sound and watching all the doors and windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You stayed awake for long hours then, right? Yeah, I was. Oh my God, the whole house was asleep and it could be like midnight and I would still be up. Wow. So one time when I was like four years old, I watched this shadow pass by my bedroom window on what I assumed was on the outside of the window. 
But our dog that was behind the fence, you know, in the backyard, he never barked. He didn't react. Yeah. And I never saw the shadow pass back by the window, which this person would have had to do that to exit the front yard. But for years, I still thought this was like a criminal, not a ghost. Mm -hmm. Until I read a lore in the children's book, Are You Afraid of the Dark? About a ghostly woman that peered into children's windows searching for her lost child. Now, I am not saying that that was this woman. I'm pretty sure it (laughs) gave like the town that she kind of haunted. I just don't remember that anymore. I'm sure it wasn't my hood, you know? (laughs) (laughs) You never know. I mean. And I am not suggesting that all those stories in those books are real, but. But damn, they're good. They are good. (laughs) (laughs) And little adolescent me became a fucking believer in that moment. I was like, what? I bet it was totally something like that that I saw. So from that point on, my senses seemed to be like kind of on alert whenever anything strange happened. But my most memorable ghostly experience took place at the home I spent most of my childhood in. I don't want to share the address for the sake of the current family that lives there right now. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, right. It's going to become a paranormal hotspot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody's going by and they're like, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> Can we do an overnight here? Excuse me? This is my home? What? (laughs) I mean, I sent them a letter. I warned them. It's their fault for not responding. But I will tell you what street it's on, just in case you live in the area and you want to drive (laughs) by and try to figure it out. Or maybe you live on that street and you have some idea and you could write to us and help me fill in the gaps. That's really what I'm looking for. Yeah. So I grew up mostly on a road called Mamie. It is spelled M-A-M-I-E. And it's in a neighborhood that's considered Nutbush in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, on a podcast a few weeks ago, I told you guys about the dark figure that I believe to be my recently deceased neighbor that my sister and I both witnessed. But as impressive as that experience was, this one's totally different and much bigger. When I was about eight years old, I woke up and it was around midnight-ish. I saw a tall, thin figure standing in the doorway of my bedroom. The figure seemed to have its like arm resting along the door frame, like above its head. This is a position that my dad often stood in as he would like talk to us in our bedrooms. So I thought that this was him and I sat up and I called to him. That's when the figure dropped its arm and stood upright and then just disappeared. Wow. I sat there in shock for a while and then I worked up the courage to go and investigate. I actually kind of thought that maybe I was in trouble or something. Like it was my dad and he was like, oh, I woke her up or something like that. So I go and I check my parents' bedroom. They're not there. So I make my way to the bathroom and along the way I saw that my mom was in the kitchen and my dad was in the living room fully involved in watching something on TV. Like he had food in front of him and he's chuckling or whatever, whatever he was watching, you know? So I'm like, doesn't seem like just a few minutes ago he could have been standing in my doorway. But I don't say anything to them, but I asked them the next morning, you know, did you come in and look in on us last night? To which they both replied, no. They actually were like, no, baby, I'm sorry. You know, uh, I was uh, busy. You know, I went straight to bed. And I'm like, no, you weren't. You were watching TV. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, that's funny. Like they were apologizing. Yeah, kind of like my dad worked late hours. And so he would come home. And then often on the weekends, he would kind of just stop in our bedrooms. And maybe if we were still up, we would have a little conversation or whatever. And it was like kind of cool when you're little like that. And you're getting to stay up past a certain time, oh, yeah. you know, just to talk to your dad. So he was being apologetic. And then it was funny because he was like, Oh, I was just so tired. And I was like, Yeah, you were eating and watching TV at like, you know, midnight. Whatever. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Damn. So the whole experience, I'm just kind of like, well, that was weird, but I don't really know what happened. So then it takes another two years before this spirit decides to show itself again. This time it appeared as a white misty figure, but coming from the same doorway. That's why I assume it's the same thing. This time around, I didn't speak to it though. It just stared at me and I stared at it. It didn't actually have a face, so I'm just assuming it's staring at me. We're both just kind of like paused in our spots. Mm. But then that bitch started to float towards me and it started to pass through some furniture at what point I decided to nope the fuck out of the situation. (laughs) How old were you again? I was 10 by now. Okay. 
So I threw myself under the blanket and I prayed to God to make it go away and to never let me see something like that again. And you know what? Since then, I have never seen a ghost in that form ever again. Yeah. I was just going to say that yeah. you have not seen another ghost since then. I'm right there with Chris when she's like, you just see that little ghost kid? Did you just yeah. see that guy on the stairs? And I'm like, right. no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when you were telling your story a minute ago and you're like trying to get my attention to look at right. something and there's some kind of force that's Keeping like, you from nope, it. you're going to stare at these bushes instead. Right. That's what yeah. you get. We've talked about this before. And, you know, I went back and forth on, should I talk about the ghost boy? Should I talk about the shadow man? I've talked about them so many times right. before. So if you guys haven't heard that story, we got like a hundred and some odd podcasts. Go on back and Just listen. Just download them all. Download them all. <laughs> Please. Actually. I've seen some shit. But the thing is, Wendy is always with me, like I said that. And she'll have some kind of an experience, but she never sees what I see. Mm -mm. Nope. I've seen like shadows out of the corners shadows. of my eyes, you know, yeah. or you think you just saw something move from a doorway or whatever, but I have never seen a full bodied apparition ever again. I've never seen a little misfigure. None of that. None of that. It's really weird. It is really weird. Especially like the angle when we were in Sedhamsville and I turned and I saw the shadow. I could see how you wouldn't see that because of where you were. Right. But at the birdcage, I mean, he must have been like right in line with my body for you to miss him or there's a veil in front of your eyes that hasn't been lifted. Like they won't let you see him anymore. But it's so strange because I can still sense them you being do. there and I can still hear things and that type of thing because this ghost didn't go away. I never yeah. saw him again, but he was still there from that day on until the day that I moved out when I was 18. He was there. Do you think it was a guardian or something? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. So his present wasn't a good one necessarily. I mean, I didn't sense it as good. And maybe I was just being negative because it scared me so much. But I would feel him watching me when I was alone. I would Ooh. feel him behind me when I was getting ready in this mirror that we had. We had like a full length mirror and I would be standing there and I can remember at times that I would feel like he was right over my shoulder and I would, I mean like out loud, tell him to leave me alone. And I would like be trying to shoo him away because I could feel his presence there. Wow. If I was like in the living room and nobody else was home, I could feel his presence in the back of the house, like in my bedroom. But it's like he couldn't come into the living room or into the kitchen. But I knew he was in there. Like, I didn't want to go into those rooms because I know he's in there. And again, I would also, nobody's home, so I can look like a nut job. I would speak out loud to him and yeah. be like, leave me alone. I know you're there. Just go away or whatever. But I would not go to my bedroom. Mm. Physically, he would turn lights, radio, TV on and off, but only in like my bedroom. He made me feel uncomfortable for years. But this one ghost spirit is maybe 95% of why I investigate the paranormal because I'm personally trying to understand how and why he existed the way he did. Yeah. And like after 10 plus years of us doing this, I can say that uh, I have no answers to that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he wanted. I'm kind of disappointed in myself for never taking the time to try to figure that out. I imagine it would have just been like, you know, I could have just asked him and recorded it, you know, well, and played it back. I mean, you were a kid. I mean, that's not what you were thinking. You were like, get away from me. That's what you were thinking. Yeah. Something is here to do me harm. Go away. I mean, I also wonder 99% uh, was your... <laughs> I said 95. 95. The other 5% is I'm just weird. And I just <laughs> like weird stuff. Um, so yeah. But I could see why you don't like horror movies. That story right there, I, that's scary. I mean, for being a 10-year-old to have that kind of presence. It, like you said, it wasn't like a, a happy presence. It wasn't someone saying, hi, I'm here. Let's play Barbies. <laughs> Let's hang out. Let's talk about past lives and stuff. It's not that kind of a cool presence. And it was haunting you. Yeah. Nobody else complained about him. My sister Just never you. seemed to have the problem. My parents never said anything about it. And they know about it now. I didn't talk to him about it then because it bothered me so much. It's like I didn't want to acknowledge him because he kind of made me feel so uncomfortable. And I just don't know if I was just really, really scared or if that's the kind of energy that he put off. Mm. I definitely think it was a male presence, probably just from the first description, the fact that he was so tall. My mom also would tell us the story... <laughs> 
she loved to tell ghost stories. But she told us that one day she was at home, I guess we were at school, and some guy just ran through the yard but he didn't stop. He ran into the bushes that line the back of our house and that goes to somebody else's backyard and then to another street. And, you know, it just keeps going. She said he ran by and he was bleeding. Oh. So sometimes I thought or wondered if it was that guy because I don't know what else it could have been. You know, yeah. we've said this a million times before. We don't know how to go like Amy Bruni to the library <laughs> and figure how out. How she does it. <laughs> what? How do you find out if anybody's ever died into your house that isn't popular or, you know, famous or, you know, an old mansion or anything? It's just some fucking small ass house in a low income neighborhood. Like, is yeah. everybody recording what's happened there? I don't know. No, I have no idea how that works, but you're right. The Amy Bruni specialists that tag team and get all the deets on everybody that's ever, but along the same lines now, Kindred Spirits, since you brought it up, she had an episode where one of the spirits in the house was somebody who died nearby and kind of got trapped there just by chance. The guy that lived there before that had passed away at the house was big into like motorcycles, like Harley Davidson's was his jam. So he had like books on Harleys. He had Harley, you know, shit in the garage and the kid died. He was a motorcycle enthusiast. So I don't know how she or her team found out, but he was probably, they think, traveling back to his house and got stuck at their spot and was comfortable enough because it's all this motorcycle shit that's around. But they really think that it's him that's haunting that house. And it's weird because maybe that's what happened at your house too. This guy your mom saw running through the backyard. Maybe he just got stuck there. Maybe he saw some kids. Maybe he had kids of his own. Yeah, I feel really bad for him because it wasn't like I had anything cool in my bedroom. Like uh, (laughs) ghost man cool. Like, what would you? (laughs) I don't know. Tankards. I mean, what do you keep around for those kind of situations? I don't know. I don't know what would have entertained him. And maybe that's why he's always staring me down. And he was like, bitch, could you get something more interesting in this room, please? Where is your Nintendo? (laughs) Yeah. Um. (laughs) Oh, which usually was like in the living room and stuff because, you know, the whole house has to share it. So it's not like it would be in our bedroom. So he's like flipping the TV on and the radio (laughs) on. And he's like, could you bring some of that shit from in the living room? I can't go in there. (laughs) So boring in here. See, that's what you needed all along was just to reason things out. That he was just a bored ghost. (laughs) I hope. Yeah. So that's my like first, well, seeing the shadow, maybe my ghost neighbor. That was probably the first ghostly form I saw. But this one, I know for a fact was a real thing happening. So I kind of attribute this to being my first real paranormal experience. You know, it wasn't the laundry all misshapen in the middle of the night. Like (laughs) (laughs) sometimes I worry that that might have been what my ghost neighbor was, was, you know, just a pile of clothes, but they can (laughs) deceive you sometimes. But this guy, I knew he was there because not only did I see him a couple of times, I saw him moving and I felt his presence, you know, until the day I moved out of there. Wow. That's a hell of a story. I know you've had a lot of child stories that you've been holding on to for instances where we somehow end up with the same story. (laughs) So what are you going to do now? (laughs) Well, I was thinking if we kept doing these small stories, then we are deciding on these topics, even though apparently I misinterpret them. (laughs) But it shouldn't happen that we tell the same story or it doesn't even matter anymore because now we're both going to be kind of collectively telling stories. So if you ever start telling a story that I'm like, that's the same thing I was going to say, then yeah, we just do it together type thing. That or the podcast is just over. That's it. Well, I have no backup anymore. No backups anymore. (laughs) Well, I mean, I've been waiting to hear your childhood story on the podcast. I've heard them before because we used to drive for eight hours, 10 hours to our (laughs) locations. So we would have plenty of time to sit and chat. (laughs) And what do we talk about? Ghosts. Ghosts. Music. Ghosts. (laughs) Ghosts. Kids, maybe. Kids. School. Ghosts. (laughs) Well, yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I think it still worked out. I didn't even think about the fact that that might actually have been my first ghostly encounter, but it makes sense why it was such a, like a monumental epic thing in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. But it was always monumental because I could not get your attention. And it just really, I didn't understand why you were right there. You weren't like, 
like I said, like a million miles away, you should have been able to just turn like, what the hell? Why is she bothering me? And I was even grabbing your shoulder. Yeah. Like, why is she like, and you just wouldn't move. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> the weirdest, most bizarre moment of my life. That's for sure. Well, I mean, it's so strange that I tell you that I made that prayer or whatever. And yeah. I'll be honest with people. And I don't want to have a full discussion about it because I just don't think about it. I grew up, my parents sending us to church. I, you know, as an adult went to church, took my kids to church. We got the basics down, but we are not really religious. It's definitely been like a, you just believe what you want to believe. That's fine. So, you know, in the past few years or whatever, I might maybe even be questioning if a God actually exists. I believe in higher beings. And I have full respect for religion, but yeah. it's so funny to tell this story about I made this prayer and it's never happened since, almost as if it's been answered. And it's like, well, if you don't believe in God, then who the hell did that? I mean, you were yeah. only talking to that one person. So unless a spirit guide just heard it and said, that's not my name, but okay, I'll still help you but out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is always that. Now, I did mention that, you know, being in the paranormal since, you know, Wendy and I have been doing this, that it did make me question my religious backing. And for a really long time, I didn't really know where I stood. My mom just considered me an atheist, but I always kind of thought I was agnostic. Yeah. Um, I wanted to believe that there was a God. I just didn't understand why there were so many different interpretations of the Bible. Yeah. And I didn't like, it was definitely this way. No, it's definitely this way. I'm like, no, no, no. Why does everyone have to be an expert in this? Let me just re- interpret it my own way. How about yeah. that? But being into the paranormal and going to these places, and my background is Catholic, and I was going to church with my dad regularly as a child. Uh, my mom even had me in Catholic school. So mm-hmm. yes, that's that's your Chris that's what's over wrong here. With you. <laughs> that's me over here. But yeah, no, like I said, I had a real hard time with all of it because it just seemed like everyone wanted to be right, and I'm just like, well, can I just believe what I want to believe? And going into this. I've discovered that there might legitimately be demons. There might be demons. And for me to sit here and say that openly, that means that there has to be angels, right? Because demons only exist in a biblical term. So it's an identification. And maybe it's not a demon. Maybe it's just an evil entity. But again, that's still got a religious backing to it. So that still puts me at a crossroads. I'm always at like, well, what does that mean? If there's evil, then isn't there good? There's got to be a balance. There's always got to be a force there trying. And, and some of the places that we've been and some of the things that we felt this oppression, I mean, Iowa, bam. <laughs> just the whole state. That's all you got to just, it's bad. <laughs> you go to places like Edinburgh and you have an experience that takes over your body and you just, you don't really know what to think anymore. There has to be a good if there's a bad. I mean- I don't know. Yeah, I'm on the I don't know either. I don't have the answers. Don't look to me. I believe in spiritual energy. And that's where I'm at. Good and bad spiritual energy. And I like to try to, you know, look at the oldest view of things and be like, let's just follow that. I know those Mm -hmm. people were probably just making it up because they didn't know how the sun worked. But... (laughs) They knew something was out there, They knew something. And uh, I'd rather just, let's go back to the beginning and let's just kind of concentrate on that, you know, because I'm just not about people thinking that they're solely right when that's not what you feel in your heart, you know? Right. So that's just where I am. So I guess you would say if somebody asked you to mark a box, which one you are, I'd have to say like agnostic, Mm -hmm. but it's mostly just because we are not saying anybody's right or wrong and we have respect for all your beliefs. It's right. just personally, these are the things that we think are right or wrong. And spiritual energy is a real thing. And there you go. The end. The end. I don't know if they have a name for that kind of belief. So whatever. No. This is not a religious topic. It's all no. about uh, ghosts and yeah, ghostly stories. So next week, <laughs> <laughs> join us again. What's next week? <laughs> I don't know what we'll talk about next week. Oh. <laughs> we may have a full story for you. We may be doing a short story like this again for you where I I can't remember what our topic was. I think, (laughs) God, let me actually check my calendar. So maybe I'll get it right next time. Favorite location. Favorite location. Favorite paranormal (laughs) location. So if you want to try to guess what our favorite paranormal locations are, listen, like I said, download all our previous podcast stories. Yes. And see which one we favored the most that we talked about already. There's a few we haven't discussed yet. 
But join us again next week. That will maybe be the topic. It might be a full length story. We don't really know what we're doing in 2021. We're making it up as we go along. It's up for grabs, y'all. But hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is the favorite paranormal location one that we've been to or just one that we've discussed? How about we both do opposite things like we did this time around? No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Done and done. We won't discuss it any further. We'll just see where where we land. (laughs) Spin the wheel. (laughs) Like I said, if they want to guess, listen to every single episode before next week. (laughs) Maybe two weeks from now. Maybe there will be an extension. We don't really know what we're doing. There's going to be a quiz at the end. (laughs) If you want to give us suggestions on how to handle 2021, then please write to us at creaturesofthenightparanormal at gmail.com. And then you can follow us on all our social medias. Maybe we'll give you a little more information about what's coming up on the next shows on that. So just, you know, look at the show notes below and that's got the links to all our social media. Plus you can follow us on YouTube. It is COTN Paranormal on YouTube. That's our channel. And we post videos on there. So we might talk a little bit more about the structure for 2021 if y'all all want to come to our business meeting about yes that. we are gonna powerpoints <laughs> presentations yes. we love meetings tons of them <laughs> yeah and then we'll come up with a whole plan and then we'll just fucking throw it to the wind in the next episode because that's how we do bye anyway that's what we do <laughs> all right that's it for this week though bye everyone bye